So we want to download some uh, CO2 emission data. We go to the Earth System Research Lab and um, go to the data page there. And the data we're going to use are these monthly mean data. So if you download these, which I've done previously, you find a, a text file. Now, it's possibly worth first looking at what this text file looks at in raw form. So here it is, CO2 underscore MMMLO. So if you double click on this, it will open, depending a little bit on your computer, in on just in a text editor. And you can see there's a, quite a bit of text here at the beginning, and then there's lots of data. Turns out that these data actually, there's really only something like five columns of data, or six columns of data, but they're plotted right next to each other. So it's a little bit of a mess. Fortunately, when you import data or if you use Excel to open this text file, everything will look a little bit more logical. So let's go to Excel and search that file in your um, in your folder. So here it is, I have it on a recent workbooks, but you will just have to go to the folder where you have uh, saved it and open it. Now Excel immediately realizes this isn't an Excel file and will try to import the data into a sensible format. And down here you can see a little bit of a preview of the data and you can first see that there's some information, that's actually very important information, uh, which you will have to look at in order to understand the data. And you can see that the actual data only starts way down here. So in row 73 is actually our first data point. And fortunately, Excel recognizes this and gives you the option to start the import of data only at a particular uh, at a particular point. And we will ask Excel to start importing the data from row 73. You can see the titles are unfortunately over two rows, so that will be uh, a little bit of an issue and we will have to import the titles or enter the titles afterwards manually. So you say next, and then you're being asked how to separate the columns. And you can see between the data columns, there's always some space. So click on space and immediately Excel will recognize, you can already see that it separates the data into nice data columns. Okay, so that all looks quite good. We can actually press finish now. And here you see, here are our data. Now they come without any titles at this stage. So let's include an extra, an extra row, we highlight and right mouse click and then say insert. And here we go. So and we can guess some of the data that's here, that is month. But what the other data are is perhaps not so obvious, especially these. This here is what is, we'll see, it's called decimal year. Okay, you can see the uh, first numbers is just the year and then we have point and something. And you can see that, for instance, this sixth month is almost 0.5. Okay. So what we now need to know is what are these data columns. So to figure out what the titles of these are, it's possibly easiest to open the data again just in a, in a text file or as we've seen previously, if you just double click on the file, it was a bit of a mess. We open it in a Word file. Okay, so open Word and then open that text file. I have done that here. And you can see the you can see the um, all the information again. And if we now just find our data, here we go. Okay, so we had the year, the month, decimal date. We had that already. Then we have average, interpolated, trend, and number of days. So let's just copy 
of that. And we go to our Excel file and put that in here. Um, it doesn't automatically put it into the column, so we highlight. So this is all in one cell. So we go, we highlight that one cell, go to data, text to columns, delimited it with spaces. Okay, and here we go. Here we have our our titles, average, interpolated, trend, and number of days. Now, what we are talking about here are CO2 emissions. Okay, so this is the average monthly CO2 concentration in the uh, in the air. Interpolated, we'll get to this in a moment. Trend, this is a seasonally adjusted series. We'll see in a moment why we need that. And uh, number of days. You will have to look at the web page to figure out that what this means is it tells us how many days have contributed to the measurement. So, what we now do next is we just think quickly about how do I go about properly understanding what these data are. In this clip, we don't have time to go through the details. The most important thing is that you A, read what the data file tells you. There will be an awful lot of information uh, in here also about uh, how you're allowed to use the data. But here, for instance, it says the average column contains the monthly mean CO2 mole fraction determined from daily averages. Um, you'll possibly also see a bit more detail. You can get a bit more detail uh, here, here you can get the units, um, which of course I don't understand uh, because I'm not a chemist, but that doesn't really matter for this purpose. In addition to this, often these websites have an awful lot more information. For instance, here you can see a link to a description how we make measurements uh, at um, Mauna Loa and indeed why it is okay to make a measurement at one point and have confidence about uh, the information that gives us about global CO2 concentrations. So let's go back to our data file. Let's look a little bit at the information. Let's go to the average series first. Let's plot it. A simple plot tells a lot. So we go to in, highlight the column, go to insert, and on charts, go on the line chart. So, and here's our line chart of the average series. You can see that the series drops to about negative 100 on a number of occasions. Now, this is a clear indication, and that's why it's important to look at data that most likely there's something wrong with these data. Now, if you look, some of these locations are very early in the sample. For instance, here, 58 in June, 58 in October, and there will be a few more such observations not too far away. Here in 64, again, we have three months in a row with this. Now, it turns out numbers like these are often indication for missing data. And Clearly, if you plot the data like this, this isn't a very good representation of the data because these missing data dominate the plot. So a number of ways how you can deal with it. In Excel, I find the easiest and most straightforward thing to do is to basically delete these observations and just leave them blank. So you can just delete them, but you may have a lot. So the way to go about that is to, to note how are missing data encoded. Here's negative 99.99. Go to find and select, and then choose replace. And then type in the find what negative 99.99 and replace with, just leave that empty. And then say replace all. And you can all of a sudden see that you have we have several of these empty cells now. Okay, there are several of these empty cells, and immediately our plot looked much nicer. Now 
you can see there are two predominant features of this plot. Uh, in fact, both of which will be see a little bit more clearly if we change the scale of the plot. So you can see here the scale is from 0 to 450. What we're going to do is we highlight the uh, vertical column, right mouse click and go to format axis. And here you can tell what the minimum and maximum value should be. Let's just put the minimum value to 200. So we can see the pattern a little bit better. So let's close this. So you can see that there's clearly a trend, an upwards trend. And of course, you know that. Actually, before we look at that, let's include the uh, years as well. So we go to select data, horizontal axis labels, we press on edit and press the first cell, hold shift, press end, and then the down arrow, and you're selecting the entire first column. And press OK. So we'll have to find our graph again, our plot that's at the top. So now we can see the years here. So you can see that, that for the data which we have from 58 to 2016, we have clearly an increasing trend. And there's also a very clear seasonal pattern. So let's leave this graph here. Turns out it is the trend series where some statistical method is applied to basically eliminate the seasonal pattern. Often the seasonal pattern we may not be too interested in. So let's uh, highlight this, go to insert line. Okay, and here we have a trend, the seasonal pattern has disappeared. Perhaps it's actually better to look at trend and average together in one graph. So we highlight one column, trend, then press the control button and highlight the D column. Now both these columns are highlighted. We go to insert line graph and we can see both series. It's a little bit difficult to see at this stage. So again, we shall change the Access and we'll have the minimum value of actually 300 to be able to see more detail. Okay, so here you can see it, and you can see orange is the average series. I'm not quite sure why there's a third average in here. Orange is the average series, and the gray series is the interpolated one. It basically mirrors the average series just without the seasonal variations.